Hello everyone and welcome back to another review. I just picked this flashlight up from downstairs. Uh, just got it from Convoy. It took probably two and a bit weeks to arrive. I can't remember exactly, but usually it's between two to three weeks to actually ship to Australia. Uh, so like I said, M21B, and this is the green version of the PM1, which is really cool because it apparently throws a lot further, well, significantly further anyway, than the normal PM1, just the white colored one. So I wanted to get this in the same host and see how it actually performs compared to my normal PM1. So the, the other PM1 I have is actually a CUL PM1. So I'll explain what those, uh, the difference is afterwards, but let's have a look quickly in the box. So as you guys know with Convoy, very simple packaging, just a bit of bubble wrap here. You've got the light, the lanyard already attached to it as well and quite quite good construction i mean look at that you really get a lot of value for what you pay for these flashlights this here is my other m21b pretty much the same thing there is no discernible difference with both of these lights uh, this one didn't come with a battery i'll have a, a few spare 21700 cells uh, pretty pretty similar um Something I'm noticing already is just underneath the the reflector, you can see a few bits of dust, and I don't know what that what they are. Little bits of bits and pieces. So I'm gonna have to actually take that out and give it a bit of a clean afterwards. And um, that's never happened before. I don't know why. I don't know why this one has uh, some of that underneath, but I'm not too happy with that. But uh, well, yeah, it's a, it's an easy fix, just a little bit annoying. Uh, let's have a look at the driver. So, uh, it says XV20. I'm not sure exactly um, how many amps this one pulls. I can't remember. I'll have to double check it again afterwards. But this other one that I have here has an 8 amp driver, just a normal PM1 on the right hand side. So, I think it's pretty similar. But again, I'll just need to confirm later on. Uh, Great. So let's just drop in a battery. I've got some 21700s. These are Samsung 40Ts. Drop one in. This is an unprotected cell. Just make sure that it does switch on. Okay. Oh, geez. That, that is really bright. Okay. Oh, that is ridiculously bright. That's, uh, I'm going to have to change the... Uh, I'm gonna have to change the mode to just uh, get rid of the strobe and stuff like that on it. I just I usually change the step mode number two. I've half kind of blinded myself. That's the lowest mode. It's a really nice, vibrant green. It's like a I don't know how to describe it. It's like a neon lime green, I suppose. Uh, so I'm actually quite curious to see how this will work at night. What I'll do, I'm gonna use this for about a week do some tests using my light meter, also do some beam shots, bring it back and let you know how it performs. Got the Convoy M21B now, and this light is really quite a throw. It's probably gonna show up quite exaggerated on camera. No, actually it looks pretty much the same. That's how it does in person. Thought the camera would pick it up a bit better, but uh, you can really see the beam of this flashlight in the air with, you, with the naked eye, it's just so obvious. And um, throws incredibly far, hits the trees right at the end and even underneath the trees as well. You can see a bit of detail in there. Look at that. Just have a bit of a walk. Two one B with the CSL PM one dot F one.
Welcome back to the video, everyone. I've used the flashlight for about a week or so now, and I want to go through some of my final thoughts and uh, bits and pieces, some thoughts that I've had of the flashlight. I've done a whole bunch of beam shots, and I wasn't able to capture them all, but I did have a few good ones in there, which I hope you enjoyed. So overall, this is really a fantastic, solid little thrower, fits in your pocket. And of course, if you can put up with that green light, then really bang for buck. There's nothing else out there of this size apart from maybe an LEP that can throw as far. Even those TIR lights, they, they still don't throw as far as, uh, as this one here. So 900 plus meters, I mean, you just can't beat that. It's kind of funny using the green light. It just reminds me of like some kind of alien light or something coming down to abduct someone. It's interesting but uh, it definitely throws really well, illuminates everything. You can see the, the beam in the air quite easily as well. So I'd say this is nearing LEP territory. And uh, I've got actually got a clip on mine. I actually just attached this from one of my other Sofern flashlights so that it fits in the pocket. Convoy don't actually include a clip on, on the M21B when it arrives. So in terms of it, fitting in your pocket, you're going to be completely fine. This is around the, you know, this is around the cusp of what I would actually put in my pocket. Anything larger does start getting a bit annoying, especially with the head, you know, this one here, the head is a slightly chunky, but at the end of the day, if you want that extra throw, you can have to put up with a slightly larger bezel. You know, some people only like using or carrying flashlights on them that are about 20 something millimeters. So really something to keep in mind. So as you guys know by now, the LED that's in this flashlight is the CSL PM1.F1. So it's basically the green version of the PM1. And you would have seen my previous video if you guys were watching the last video or last few videos I put up had the white version, the KW version of this PM1 emitter. So it's a two millimeter by two millimeter LED, as you can see there, but the difference between this one and the CUL, so the CSL PM1 and the CUL PM1 is if you look at the base just around the edge of the, the yellow of the LED, the, the actual uh, die, you've got a, yeah, basically like a 30, 30 footprint. So that little, I don't know what it's called. The thing that it sits on basically is a little bit smaller. And some people think that it will decrease the heat sinking ability. I didn't see any issues here when I was testing the flashlight again, but this was at six amps. I mean, if you were driving this flashlight at eight amps, the LED at eight amps, perhaps you would probably want it in the 4040. I don't know if it even comes in the, the 4040. So that's something to keep in mind. You've got the AR lens, anti-reflective lens, which is great. I think it's a standard across all flashlights to make sure that you don't uh, basically just increases in fish efficiency of the flashlight the bezel cutouts as well you can see here uh, you know the m21b has got some really nice cutouts and that just increases that surface area especially when you're driving an led at quite you know high current this one's at six amps but the eight amp one definitely you know i'm happy that it has those cutouts on there one thing i've also found is that the bezel the head of the bezel is very easily removable so you can basically just unscrew it as you can see here take it out now if you're going to do that i'd suggest like having it upside down like this and taking it off with the reflector in there because as you can see i've got all kind of dust and stuff underneath the reflector which i need to clean out with some some water later it doesn't really affect the beam but it's just something to to keep in mind a lot of manufacturers just don't allow you access to the LED, it's good that Convoy does, especially if you want to modify the LED or just, I don't know, check out what's in there, I guess. But yeah, be careful of dust. As you can see, smooth reflector, and that's what you'd expect with a flashlight that's predominantly designed for throw. You want that smooth reflector. It's fairly deep as well. It goes kind of just, yeah, about halfway into where the little cutouts are on the bezel. So fairly deep reflector and a decent amount of width as well. I'm gonna go through a little demonstration of the UI now so that you can see how it works. Now, basically there's only one switch. You see on the back here, just one little rubber switch. Press the switch and I've actually got it on 
the lowest mode right now, just on the lowest mode. So you tap the switch and you can basically just increase it two, three, four, five, and that's the brightest mode, and then it just swaps back to the first one. Okay, and the way I programmed it is that it's got memory mode, so I can switch off, switch on, remembers the last mode. I usually leave it on highest mode, so the 100% mode. And the good thing I find about the memory mode is that you don't have to leave the flashlight off for too long for it to actually remember. I think about one second is enough. So there, switch on again, you know, there you go, there. So it just remembers that last mode. And especially when you don't have a tactical switch there or momentary switch, I think that really helps if you want to activate the flashlight quickly, look at something, turn it off, quickly look at something else. Some lights have uh, too long of a wait time before it actually remembers the last mode. And I find that to be to be annoying. So this is a good little feature that the, uh, yeah, you only takes about one second for it to remember. Another thing to remember with this light is that it actually comes with another 10 group modes, I believe. So you can actually go in. The way you do it is that you basically just keep pressing that button. I'm not gonna do it, but you keep pressing that button until the light switches off and then it flashes once and then you half press the button and then you can cycle through the different modes. If you're interested in, in finding out how to do that, just let me know in the comments. I'll, I'll uh, send you on the, in the right direction. Simon's website has some instructions on there. But the way that I've got mine set up is on five modes. So I think it's zero. Oh, that's bloody bright. So, you know, 0.1%, 1%, 10%, 30 10%, 30%, and then 100%. So I think that, that works really well, especially because you've got that moonlight mode, I suppose that really, really low mode that I can use sometimes. And I, I usually just leave, if I have it on, if I have this in the house, I'll just leave it on that mode so that I don't accidentally blind myself when I switch on the flashlight. You can also switch off memory mode as well if you want. All right, let's talk a little bit about performance now. So I ended up doing a ceiling bounce test and a few measurements as well with my light meter. And I'll have them up on the screen now. As you can see, the ceiling bounce test shows the lights start to ramp down slowly from about, yeah, when it pretty much turns on up into one and a half minutes. And then you get a sharp dip around the two minute mark, just before the two minute mark. And at three minutes plus, the light dips to about 50, just below 50% of its output. Okay, so I think that's pretty good considering that, you know, these are quite small hosts and they don't tolerate heat so well. So even being able to hold that highest mode, that 100% mode for over a minute, I think that's pretty good. Also took a couple of candela measurements. So the first measurement, as you can see, was when the flashlight was first on. So it managed to get 925 meters of throw. After 30 seconds, 894 meters of throw. And that's in line with the ceiling bounce test as well, as you can see even at the half minute mark the light is you know it's pretty close to 100 percent. it's probably dropped to 95 percent or something of its output so pretty solid and good to know that it can hold its brightness for at least 30 seconds a minute and a lot of flashlights that you see these days especially smaller ones you turn them on they immediately just ramp down significantly so it's really important that especially for the thrower or something that you need to turn on for a little bit to spot what's going on in the distance that it does it is able to hold its brightness. Also took some measurements of the bezel and the battery tube to see what it was like during testing. So about five minutes through the testing, it maxed out in temperatures. So I measured again at eight minutes and the bezel was about 46 degrees, 45, 46, kept kind of hovering between that. The top of the battery tube got up to 40 degrees. So it starts to, it's really funny because it starts to move all the way down here. And uh, initially it's a little bit hot up there, then it just starts moving down. So, you know, the heat just dissipates all the way through the flashlight. So even at 40 degrees, it's still within the safe limits of the battery. So with lithium ion cells, you don't want it to exceed 60 degrees Celsius or even get close to that. But again, when you're holding it, I do find it to be a little uncomfortable, especially near the head. I can't hold it at the head. I have to hold it down the bottom like that. So kind of like this. And, you know, especially when you're holding the flashlight as well. Another thing is that it's not going to get as hot if it's if you're holding it because that heat's going to dissipate through to your hand as well.
I think for the 100% mode, six amps for the CSL PM1 is the perfect current level. It doesn't get too hot, but you do get the most lumens out of the emitter. When you start using the eight amp driver, it's really just diminishing returns. You might get a little extra brightness, but again, it just gets too hot to hold as you would have seen in one of my previous reviews of the eight amp version of the white emitter, the CULPM1. The beam profile is really nice. It's a perfect circular beam, bright and even spill. It's kind of like a really large circle, perfect circle around the edge. You don't see any of these bezel cutouts, which I really like. The hotspot is really intense and uncomfortable to look up close, especially if you are on the highest mode. I mean, I don't think this is the type of torch that you're gonna be using around the house or that you'd wanna use around the house. It's a really funny color and it's just too bright on most of the modes. If you switch it on, I mean, this is just like on the 0.1 mode. That's okay, you can use that. But yeah, this is a specialty flashlight. It's a green emitter and designed for maximum throw and visibility. So it's good for identifying objects, terrible for recognizing any colors. So that's the trade-off and it's significantly brighter, throws further than the white version. And there's a pretty long runtime as well, especially on the lower modes with the 21700 cell. And just out of interest, I thought I'd just test, do a ceiling bounce test with the eight amp version, the eight amp white version of this LED in the same host. And I found that the Lux reading for this one was 402 for the green and 263 for the eight amp white version. It's really quite a significant increase in brightness. I don't know why, but the green emitter seems to produce more light even with lower amps at six versus eight amps. So imagine if you ramp it up to eight amps, manage to get an eight amp driver and they'll produce even more lumens. So a few considerations you might wanna keep in mind. Again, like I was mentioning, the green lights, not everyone's cup of tea. I didn't get this one to use around the house for general purposes. I got this, you know, just for fun. I wanted to see how it compared to the white version. I wanted to see how far it could throw. Yeah, just out of interest, really. And maybe I can use it as a spotting light at some time. But anyway, that's the trade-off. And there's no tactical mode as well. So, you know, the good thing is that the memory mode does, doesn't does require much, you know, about a second for it to remember that last mode. So if you have to activate the light pretty quickly, turn it off, turn it on, you know, kind of give it a little bit of time. If, if you do it too quick, see it switches modes. But if you do it within about a second, you're fine, okay? So it's a simple design. And um, you know that might not be everyone's cup of tea, but for, for what you pay for this flashlight, you really just get the extreme performance. And if you don't get all the bells and whistles, there's no onboard charging. So you're gonna have to have your own battery charger. Or you might have like a, a battery that has its own USB port in it. That's another option. You can get one of those. But again, doesn't come with a tail clip but it does come with extremely, extremely bright LED and it throws, it does its job. So if you're just looking for a bare bones, something that will perform, do the job, great flashlight. I think this is one of the best budget throwers out there. Green light's more visible to the human eye than any other wavelength. So this light takes full advantage of that fact and it really plays to the advantage of the CSL PM1 with its throwy beam profile. So if you're looking for a unique and fun pocket thrower, this is it. Left the link in the description if you want to go and check out this flashlight. And if you have questions, just let me know below. Finally, if you're enjoying my videos or you found them helpful, do me a favor and click that like button. And if you want to see me make some more reviews and create some great quality content, make sure that you subscribe. Thanks for watching.